nine bucks. Nine bucks. Hold on just a minute. Let, let me get let me get on here and then we can talk a little bit. And it's coming on uh, uh, Facebook. Well, greetings to you that are here with us on Facebook uh, live. We thank you for uh, chiming in. Uh, we want to wait a few minutes. And so while we wait a few minutes, I finish talking to my missionary Crawford. No, I did not eat up all the ham. I, I left. I told you he only, he only got two crutches. <laughs> I didn't say he got four crutches. <laughs> You know, you got to. You got to. You got to. Uh-huh. Where, where Mama, is, is Is Mama White on the phone? It, it, hey, Mama White, did you cook lima beans? Huh? My daddy loves, I, daddy, I bet you put that, I bet you put that bone, that ham bone in that lima bean and made the good old thick sauce in that, the thick uh, juice in that lima beans. And had that, uh, uh, not the cornbread, the white meal uh, cornbread. I bet you had time. Why do you wait to 
uh, 18 years later. You, you know, don't get all your secrets. You're all secrets, nothing. No. We, we're on the air. I'm secrets. on the air now, Lady J. <laughs> Alright, bless all of you. We're going to get started here. We want, we always want to give the people a few minutes to get on. We have a little laugh with one another. Uh, laughter is good for the soul. And so we praise God for all of you that are already on. Uh, we have uh, Mother Wild and her mother. Uh, mother White is on the phone. Uh, Sister uh, uh, Crawford, Regina Crawford, uh, is on the line. Anyone else on the conference call? Did, I, did we miss anybody? Sister Beverly, oh yeah, them Crawford sisters, yeah, Sister Beverly, she's on the line. Anyone else? Hey, Bree, what's up? Brianna's on the phone. All right. All right, she's on the phone. She's on the phone. All right. How's that weather up there, Brianna? Is it cold? The high was 32. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. All right. Bless your heart. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. All right. We want to thank the Lord for you. And I know that the Campbells are normally on uh, Deacon and Sister Campbell and the Spates. Uh, uh, Minister Spade and his wife. Uh, I've already seen Vanessa. Uh, and Terrence, and Sister Sabrina, uh, Sister Bridget uh, McDonald uh, is is on, and so I'm sure others will be chiming in as we uh, go forth uh, in the in the Lord on tonight. Um, and then, of course, we have Lady J that is here. Uh, as we at least we didn't talk about her behind her back. We was we was right here in front of her face. All right. All right, <laughs> so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I want to talk to you today uh, on the hope that's worth living for. The hope that's worth living for. All right, so I pray that uh, each week I ask you to bring your uh, pencils and paper and uh, bring your Bible. Uh, where you can follow along, but we, we're, we're again we're going to talk about the hope that's worth living for, and that comes from First John chapter three, verse one. First John chapter three, verse one. Okay, uh, excuse me, uh, one through three. I'm sorry. First John chapter three, verses one through three. Verses one through three, and you will find these words. Behold. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we should be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Amen. Uh, let's also thank God, Mother Savannah, Mother Savannah, uh, on the line. We want to praise the Lord for uh, her. Okay. All right. Let me start like this. We don't have a habit problem as much as we have a hope problem. <laughs> we don't have a habit problem as much as we have a hope problem. Where does this hope come from and how can we get more of it? Well, there's three different ways I'm going to tell you on tonight. Number one, this hope comes from knowing God. This hope comes from knowing God. God bless you, uh, Pastor Robert Johnson, all the way from uh, Indiana. God bless you, my friend. All right. This hope comes from knowing God. 
Because 1 John 3 and 1 says, and I'm reading back out of the New Living Translation, See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children. And that is what we are. But the children who belong to this world don't recognize that we are the we, that we are God's children because they don't know Him. Okay, as believers, our self worth is based on the fact that God loves us and calls us His children. We are His children now, not just sometimes in the distant future. Knowing that we are His children should encourage us to live as Jesus did. To live as Jesus did. That's why it says in Romans 5 and 5, he says, And hope make us not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. In other words, he's saying that all three members of the Trinity are involved in salvation. The Father loved us so much that he sent his Son to bridge the gap between us, according to John 3.16. Then the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to fill our life with love and to enable us to live by his power. What is his power? Well, we go to Acts 1 and 8 on that. He said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. With all this loving care, how can we do less than serve him completely? The Lord has shown us that he loves us. He loves us enough to call us his children. And because he calls us his children, he's showing that he loves us. So he, he's showing that he loves us. Then how can we not do the same by also loving him? Let me go to Romans 8, 14 through 17. Romans 8, 14 through 17. And you will find these words. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Now, Paul used adoption to illustrate the believer's new relationship with God. In Roman culture, in Roman culture, the adopted person lost all rights in his old family and gained all the rights of a legitimate child in his new family. He became a full heir to his new father's estate. So likewise, when a person becomes a Christian, he or she gains all the privilege and responsibilities of a child in God's family. Once I mean, one of these outstanding privileges is being led by the Spirit. We may not always feel as though we belong to God, but the Holy Spirit is our witness. His inward presence, watch this, His inward presence reminds us of who we are and encourages us and encourages us with God's love. His inward presence. That is why I say so many times that we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit. It will remind you because it's in you. It's dwelling. 
in you. It is the power that dwells inside of you. And because it is the power that dwells, it witnesses that you are God's children, child. Okay? So the inward presence reminds us of who we are and encourages us with God's love. So whenever things come, trials, tribulation, heartaches, and pain, the Holy Spirit will remind you that you are God's child. And because you are God's child, whatever you're going through, you're going to make it. God has already given us His best gift. Watch this now. God has already given us His best gift. What did He give us? He gave us His Son. Then His, then his Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Son, Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Then forgiveness and eternal life. Look what He's given us. He's given us His Son, He's given us the Holy Spirit, and He's given us forgiveness, and He's given us eternal life. And He encourages us to ask Him for whatever we need. Wait, now, He's already given you, He gave you His, he gave you his Son, He gave you the Holy Spirit, He gave you forgiveness, He gave you eternal life, and then He yet opened the door for you to ask whatever you need. How can you not love a God like that? Let me say that again. I, I, want, I want that to soak into you. Look what God gave you. God gave you His Son. God gave you the Holy Spirit. God gave you forgiveness. God gave you eternal life. And then He says, whatever else you need, <laughs> just ask me. What a mighty God we serve. And when you have hope in that, that you know you got it, you got his son, you got the Holy Spirit, you got forgiveness, you got eternal life, and I can still ask for whatever I want? Oh, my goodness, you talk about, that's grace, that's five. That's five different things. That's grace. But let me tell you a part you don't want to hear and we don't like. Let me tell you a part you don't want to hear and don't like. That's my niece. Hey, Jerry, how are you doing? And whoever else they're watching with you, all right. But here's the part that we don't like. Because there is a price for being identified with Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, you, 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 y'all forgive me. I do like being balanced, okay? Okay, oh, I don't want you to get too, too high. I'm not going to let you get too low. I'm going to keep you right there in the middle. But there is a price. There is a price for being identified with Jesus. Along with being heirs of God's glory, Paul also mentions the suffering that Christians must face. What kind of sufferings are we to endure? The first, uh, the first century believers, there was economic and social persecution, and some even faced death. We too must pay a price for following Jesus. In many parts of today's world, Christians face pressures just as severe as those faced by Christ's first followers. Even in countries where Christianity is tolerated or encouraged, Christians must not become complacent. To live as Jesus did, serving others and giving up one's rights, resisting pressures to conform to the world, always exacts a price. Uh-oh. Nothing we suffer, however, can compare to the great price that Jesus paid to save us. Amen, somebody. To live for him, serving others, giving up your rights, resisting pressure, re resisting conformity to this world, takes the price. But just remember, whatever you go through, it does not compare to what Jesus did just to save us. Amen. Those who know God have great hope. Let me say it again. Those who know God have great hope. And when you have great hope, you can endure any situation that comes into your life. Any trial, any heartache. And this is where we are today, my, my brothers and sisters, and especially during this coronavirus or uh, COVID-19. Many people have lost hope. And the reason why we are standing today is because we went to a meeting one night. My heart wasn't right, but we got a hold of Jesus. And when we got a hold of Jesus, we got a hold of hope. 
And we said to ourselves, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. So in other words, it, it doesn't matter what befall me. It doesn't matter what I suffer. As long as I know that I got King Jesus on my side, I got hope I can make it. So those who know God have great hope. That's why you, you listen. Listen, in your downtime, and, and, and many have had downtime uh, 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 during this season uh, uh, of this pandemic. We've had some downtime, but during this downtime, you should have been more in your word. You should have been praying more. You should have been calling on the Lord, getting closer to God, that while we're going through this pandemic, you don't have to fret. You don't have to worry. Okay. You don't have none of that. Is, that none of that is in in your spiritual vocabulary. Why? Because you have that great hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> knowing God starts with knowing the love of God. Knowing God starts with the love of God. What did I just say? God gave you. God, He loved you so much. He gave His Son. He gave you the Holy Ghost. He gave you forgiveness. He gave you eternal life. And then you turn around and say, whatever else you want. <laughs> just ask me. Okay? He loved you that much. God, knowing God starts with knowing that His love for you. He has a copy love. What is a copy love? It doesn't matter. It, listen, it is beyond what you can even think. It, it, it is so, you know, His love is, is so great for you that you will never lose His love. That's how much God loves you. That's how much He loves you. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. How great is that? Knowing God is not just an issue of the mind, but more, but more so of the heart. Let me say that again. Knowing God is not just an issue of the mind, but more so of the heart. Amen. We, we, a lot of people know God in their mind, but they don't know the Lord in their heart. And we've got to make sure that Jesus is in our heart. Jesus is in our heart. God is always lavishing us with his love. But the world, watch this, just can't see it. Okay? The world just can't see it. He's always lavishing us with his love. He loves us. He just throws, he just throws all kind of love on us. But the world can't see it. Why can't the world see it? Because the world don't know him. They won't, they don't see what God has given you. That's why they can't understand that in the midst of your storm and they know you're going through the storm, you still got peace. You still got joy. You still got love. How do you do this? Because my hope is in God. But guess what? You can't see it. In other words, it's invisible to you. And because it's invisible to you, you can't see the love that God has for me. Whew. So God is always laughing us with his love. But you know this world can't, just can't see it. What is the most lavish thing God has done for us to express his love? God sent Jesus into the world to die for our sins. God bless you, Sister Tom. See you there. What is the most lavish thing God has done for us to express his love? God sent Jesus into the world to die for us, for our sins. That's why Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, she's awake, she's awake now, y'all. She's awake now. <laughs> while we were still sinners, these are amazing words. God sent Jesus Christ to die for us, not because we were good enough, but just because he loved us. Whenever you feel uncertain about God's love for you, remember that he loved you even before you turned to him. 
Oh my God. Amen. When you was out there living in the world, you were doing all everything the world had to offer. Do can you can I tell you the Lord loved you? Why you were partying? Why are you on the dance bathroom floor? Why are you sitting there having your margarita? <laughs> Why are you were smoking that joint? Why are you were hitting that pipe? Why are you were doing all those things? I'm here to let you know. Why are you living a promiscuous life, an adulterous life, a fornicated life, whatever life you in? Can I tell you, God died for you even though you weren't His yet, but He loved you enough, even as a sinner, to die. For you. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. But guess what? I say it again. The world just can't see it. <laughs> the world just can't see it. They can't see all this love that God has for you. The only way they're going to see it. They don't have to come over to the other side and be with the Lord Jesus. What is the best thing that can happen to me if I know God's love? I can become a child of God. Watch this. Rule out. I can become somebody in the world. No. When you become a child of God, you are somebody in the world. Amen, Amen somebody. You are somebody, and you don't need Jesse Jackson to tell you, I am somebody. The Lord, because you are a child of the king, <laughs> you are somebody. Amen. You need, to, you need to understand that. You need to understand that. Then, then it's not so easy for folks to put you down and negative talk to get you so depressed when you know that you are a child of the king. And I am somebody just because I belong to Jesus. That's why John 1 and 12 says, he says, For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's the book. All who welcome Jesus Christ as Lord of, your, of their lives are reborn spiritually, receiving new life from God through faith in Christ. This new birth changes us from the inside out, rearranging our attitude, our desires, and our motives. Being born makes you physically alive and place you in your parents' family. But being born of God makes you spiritually alive and puts you in God's family. This fresh start in life is available to all who believe in Christ. Amen. What am I saying? Your physical family, your biological family, can deny you. Say that. They can act like they never knew you. They don't want nothing to do with you. But can I tell you? Being born in God's family. Woo! He knows you. He knows all about you. He'll supply you every need. He'll take care of you. Amen, somebody. Oh, see, that's why it supersedes. Okay, when Jesus said, come unto me, he said, come to me, forsaking mother, forsaking father, forsaking sister, brother. Why? Because he wants you to understand when they're not there, he is. And he will always be there for us. He'll never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen, somebody. Amen. As the old folks say, amen, lights. Hallelujah. What, that, what does that do for your hope when God becomes your father because you went ahead and received and believed in Jesus? Your new father is the authority of hope. Watch this. What does it do? It lets you know your new father is the authority on hope. Let me say it again. He is the authority on hope. You can't find a greater authority on hope anywhere else in the world. He is the authority on hope. He knows all about hope. He is hope. <laughs> and because he is hope, then you know that in Christ, I can make it. Romans 15 and 13 says this. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you. I, I, you know, I got to give you scripture. 
I just told you he's the authority of hope. I'm going to back it up with scripture. Can I back it up with the, with the word? All right. This is what it says in Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope <laughs> fills you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound, watch this, in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. I just told you that the Father is the authority of hope. Romans 15, 13 backs it up and says, Now God of hope fills you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I know I got that right. I know I got that right. Now watch this. In order to overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, I must first be filled with hope by God and His Father. Okay? In order to overflow with hope, I gotta have it. I gotta have that 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 fountain of hope. And that fountain of hope comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. So I need to have it where I can be filled full of hope. Full of hope that comes from God the Father. How do I get to be filled with hope. The answer is, as you trust in Him. Okay? How do I get filled? You got to continue to trust in Him. You got to continue to have faith in Him. You got to continue to believe in Him. And as you do those things, your hope grows. As the more the Lord do for you, the more He delivers you, the more He uh, answers your prayer, it will develop your hope. How can I trust in Him more? How can I trust in Him more? One, by getting to know Him more. <laughs> That's easy, eh? You thought it was going to be a big old, big old uh, answer. No, it's very simple. How can I trust Him more? By getting to know Him more. How do I get to know Him more? Through the works of God. Through the works of God. When you look at creation, when, see, when you know God, you look at things differently. And when you look at creation and how God created this world, you look around and, and how the mountains look and all this, this God's beauty. I mean, uh, just like this week here uh, in Palm Springs, California, uh, the weather's been real good. And we've been able to really take a good look at the mountains and the surrounding areas. And, and oh, what a blessing. That ain't, that's nothing but God. Can't nobody do that but God. Nobody do that but God. Only a God can shake these mountains the way they are. Only a God can put a whole Coachella Valley in, in between mountains. Amen, somebody. Only a God. Only a God can do this. Amen. How, do I, how, by, uh, how, how can I get to uh, trust Him more? Through the Word of God. Number two, through the Word of God. Study your Word. Study your Word. Get in your Word. Read your Word. Amen. Get up, get in the morning and get a, get a Bible scripture. I don't care if you just read one scripture a day. Get a Bible scripture. Read that scripture. Meditate on that scripture all day. And the more you meditate on that, you're meditating on God's word. So by getting God's word. Number three, how, do I, how can I trust him more? Through the Son of God. Through Jesus Christ himself. Through Jesus Christ himself. Amen, somebody. Amen. So somebody say amen if I can hear you say amen. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, where does this hope come from and how can I get more of it? Okay. Number one, uh, I said this hope comes from knowing God. This hope comes from knowing God. Now, I'm going to get down to number two. Number two is this hope grows only as we become more like Christ. This hope grows only as we become more like Christ. Now, verse 2, remember verse 2 said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like Him. Amen, somebody. 
as long as we are becoming more like Christ, we are keeping this hope alive. This hope alive. Watch this. Listen to this. Listen to this. I'm going to say it slow. Dying hope will make us more like the world. Living hope will make us more like Christ. Let me say that again because you might want to write that one down. Dying hope will make us more like the world. Because the, the less hope you have, the more your hope dies, the more you depend on worldly solutions to get you out of this predicament that you are in. But living hope, believing in that living Jesus Christ will make us more like Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. At various times, our hope is going to be tested. Okay? At various times, our hope is going to be tested. One way, the world will test it. <laughs> the world will test it. Let me tell you another way it's going to be tested. And this is one we hate. Even David hated this one. The silence of God will test it. Woo! Woo! The silence of God will test it. Because he says, what will we be has not yet been made known. Oh, Lord, have mercy. When God is silent, it tests our hope. When you don't hear from him, seem like he's nowhere around, it tests our hope. Remember that God is always in control. God controls the circumstances of our life in order to make us more like him. Romans 8, 28, 29 says this. And we know, and we know that all things work together. work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among uh, many brethren. Big man, somebody. Is that the book, lady? All right. Don't lose hope because we are promised that when when he appears, we shall be like him. Why? Because you know all the things, whatever you go through. All things work together for your good because you love him and he loves you. Amen. All right. Now, so our hope in everything is this. God is somehow using this difficult circumstances to make me more like Christ. Amen. We have to be molded. We have to be created. We have to be renewed. We have to be reshaped. We have to be re-educated. Amen. Why? Because when we came to Christ, we had a lot of world in us. We were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. But God has to now deprogram us from all the world stuff and begin to re-educate us of how we were predestined to be. Amen. Amen. You were predestined to be something great. You were predestined to be something that God had called in these last new days. So don't let the world put you down. You God's child. And he already knew what was in you when you were born. Okay? Now, uh, number three. That's where I'm at. Number three. Finally, this hope allows us to see God. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm going to go back again. Hold up. I need to go back here just a second again. Because I asked the question. Where does this hope come from? And how can we get more of it? And number three is 
This hope allows us to see God. Because at the end of verse number two, this is what he says. For we shall see him as he is. <laughs> we shall see him as he is. All right? Immature Christians see God only in the good times. Woo! I shot that shot. Yes, I did. All right? Immature Christians see God only in the good times. But mature Christians see God in the good and the bad. When 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 we when we have bad times, when you're mature Christians, you say this too shall pass. <laughs> when you when you're mature Christians, you say weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. When you're mature Christian, you say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver me out of them all. That's what mature Christians do. Immature Christians, immature worry. <laughs> They're despondent. They, they wait on the world to fix their problems. But mature Christians say, and the Lord will fix it after a while. <laughs> then they say, if he don't do it, I know he's able. <laughs> don't y'all get me started. Don't y'all get me started. No, don't get me started. All, all I need over here, somebody hit a B3 organ right now. I call the preacher right here. Because when I start talking about how good God is and and, 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 and begin to just rely on his word, that's what I say. Get the word. Get the word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me. Lord, have mercy. You need to have that word in you. You need to have that word in you. You need to have that word in you. All right? And when that word is in you, when bad times come, guess what? You'll be thinking about what the Lord has done. And because you think about what the Lord has done, you'll say he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That God will take care of his children. And then watch this. Everything uh, that uh, uh, is, is, is bad, that comes bad to you, to you. Uh, and again, it's for your good, but watch this. Sometimes we're praying for things that God don't want us to have. My God. Uh-oh. Yeah, I believe James says... And you pray it in a mist. Well, that's the book. Amen, somebody. That's the book. I, I know I hit that one on the head. I, I, this, this, these comments is going off the wall right now. All right? Because sometimes we pray and we, and, and we get mad at God because God didn't, didn't do it. Sometimes God don't answer your prayers because he knows the condition of your heart. My God. And he knows where you are. And he knows if he give it to you, he'll never see you again. My God. Because some, some folks are users. They want to use God to get what they want from God. But then when they get what they want from God, God can't find them. Help us, Lord. Amen, somebody. I know I turned that curve. I know I didn't, I didn't throw you out the window when I made that, made that turn. But we must understand See, you can't use God. God will, listen, God will allow you to be in your mess until you get sick and tired. Because when you get sick and tired, you'll make the change. Amen, somebody. So, so, so sometimes, and that's why it, that in between, and the, 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 see, that, I think it was Peter told us that some of you are still on milk. They don't milk. How are you in the church? Uh, uh, 10, 12, 15 years still uh, on, on milk. When are you going to get some meat? When, when in the world are you going to get some meat? When, when are you going to get something that really nervous you and, and, and strengthen you and, and build you up? I mean, you, 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 you dehydrated? You are a dehydrated Christian. Amen, somebody. You, 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 as, as a child of God, that's the word I was looking for. You're a malnourished Christian. That's what I was looking for. Malnourished. Amen. Why? Because
because you're not getting any meat. Where you can grow some substance. Amen. I, I was I was talking for some some of you just came on and 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 and, and my niece member is on the other line. They and they, they call my father Papa, and they know Papa need uh, uh, love them lima beans, they them lima beans, and 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 but the lima beans was thick. They they put something on you, boy. They the lima beans put something on you. Okay. I now now Loretta didn't like it. <laughs> They didn't like that lima beans, but I was sitting there with Dad and them lima beans and that cornbread and whatever meat he put with it. I, I was there with it, okay? But it put something on you. And too many, uh, too many Christians today, you just want milk, but you don't want the real meat of God. And that's why sometimes you have that dying hope. And that dying hope is the one that keeps you worldly. But that mature hope helps you make the change. Help you make the change in God. Amen. Because you got some stick to itness. You got some stick to itness. That's what uh, as, as babies grew up. They first started, we gave them milk. But after a while, we found out milk didn't keep them free. So we had to put some cereal in the milk. And when they passed the fear, they had some substance that held them a little longer. That's what's the problem with us. We 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 still full of milk. Amen, somebody. No substance. No substance. Nothing that'll keep you strong, keep you bound together. And that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Watch this. The Holy Spirit keeps you glued. To God. I like that. Woo! It helps keep you glued to God. And when you glued to God and you know that God is hope, then you can say, No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Because you know your hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me finish. Let me finish with this. I'm going to conclude with this. Everyone who has this hope, watch this, purifies himself. Just as he is pure. Everyone who has this hope purifies himself. I believe it's Colossians chapter 5 when he said, modify yourself. There's some things you got to do. There's some things you got to kill. There's some things you got to Put that thing down. Now see, that's milk folks. That's milk folks. Milk folks want God to do everything. Yes. But there's some things you got to do. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can't stop some things continue to be around them. My God. Continue to suck them up. You, 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 you cannot be Christ-like and you're more around the world than you are around Christ. My God. Something's going to give. Well, make it plain. It's going to give. So if you want to be Christ-like, you got to be around Christ-like people. Now watch this. I'm going to make it clear. Everybody in the church ain't Christ-like. Please, say that. Say it again. All right. Everybody, even the Lord say, all this say, yay, yay, say I'm not either. Oh, that's the book. So, so you, that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Well, you can discern who to attach yourself to. Because everybody, you don't want to attach yourself to. Even in the pews of the church you go to. Make it plain. Thank you, Lord. So you got, that's why I need that Holy Spirit. Who, God, God uh, attract me to the type of person you want me to be around. Have you ever noticed the people that you're around going through the same thing you're going through? <laughs> oh, All y'all in the same group. My God. Y'all do the same thing. Yeah, but Jesus. Well, we folks can't help. We folks. Lord have mercy. I had to get off this thing, y'all. I just got excited in here. But we folks can't help we folks. They told me, and I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited in here. But they told me that they had, I, 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 I was in the country, but this is what I, I, I saw when I watched this. I did a little reading on that when they had the old oxen, they would plow 
the land. They put a young one with him. Woo! Make a plan. And put a yoke around both of their necks. All right. And that young would do what the old did. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Yeah. And he was teaching him how to help plow the land because his day was coming. Make a plan. His day was coming, the young one, when he would have to plow by himself because the old one was going off the scene. Make a plan. I'm here to tell the people of God that we have to grab hold of all the hope we can because there's a shift that's happening in the world today and there's a shift that's happening in Christendom. Make it plain. And the shift that is happening that we're losing a lot of our foundation. Amen. And if the young, younger generation don't get a good toehold, rooted, grounded in Jesus. I don't know where this church is going to be. Make it fine. But one thing I do know, I got hope in Jesus. And he said, before I am defeated, well, <laughs> <laughs> I have a rock style to me. All right? That stony heart. That alcoholic heart. That drug habit heart. All them hearts, God said, before I'm defeated, I have them cry out to me. So what, so what am I saying? We do not have a habit problem as much as we have a hope problem. We don't have a habit problem as much as we have a hope problem. My brothers and sisters, I'm done. I am done. I've concluded. Y'all made me all excited in here. But the hope that's worth living for is that hope in Jesus Christ. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like, we shall be like him. Well, that's the point. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Works on his self. You got to work on your own self. Make it plain. We used to say, I think it was a song, Work on Me, Lord. Work on my eyes and don't see no evil. Yes. Work on my ears and don't hear no evil. Work on my tongue and don't speak no evil. Work on my mind and don't think no evil. Work on me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need, in the need of, prayer. of prayer. So my hope is in God. You can't deter that from me. And the people I hang around, you can't deter them either. Because we like-minded. We love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. I want to lead you to the Lord Jesus. I'm done. I'm going to lead you to the Lord Jesus where you can have this hope. Repeat after me. Father, forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge my wrongs. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day morning, God the Father raised him from the dead. Now, Lord, I open my heart, I receive you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Greater is he that's in me and he that's in the world. Amen. And if you said that prayer with me, you have just joined the authority of hope. <laughs> and he will give you all the hope that you need because he's lavishing you with his love, which the world cannot see. God bless you. I pray that I've said something tonight that's been a blessing unto you. Uh, on this evening, if you if this ministry has been a blessing to you, and you want to be a blessing to the ministry, then I'm asking you to use these platforms. You can go to www.lovwc.org and go to our website. And as you go to our website, uh, you can uh, uh, give through your credit card or through PayPal or through Givelify. You may have Givelify already on your app on your phone or your iPad. And when you go on Give and Find, look up Lily of the Valley Worship Center. Then we have a cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign L-O-V-1779. 
And then if that uh, is not satisfactory for you, the post office box is P.O. Box 2363, uh, Palm Springs, California, 92263. God bless you. I pray uh, that you have, I pray that you have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving and uh, we're looking forward to a wonderful Christmas coming up uh, that the Lord will bless you. Uh, don't stress yourself uh, because there will be no Christmas without the Christ. And the reason for the season is not the gift store or what's under the tree. The reason for the season is is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's make sure uh, that we give him thanks for all that we have and all that uh, God has blessed us because the rest of the year is coming after December 25th. Amen? Uh, well, I'll say another year is coming uh, if the Lord delays his coming after December 25th and you still going to have to live. And so uh, don't, don't, don't put yourself out there. Uh, do what you can. And just be thankful that the Lord gave you uh, another day. Well, until Sunday, uh, we will see you. Uh, no, tomorrow night. I am sorry. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Thursday night Sunday school. Thursday night Sunday school. Uh, our dear uh, sister Beverly Crawford on tomorrow night uh, is going to be coming with the, the good teaching of Sunday school on Thursday night. All right. We want you to join in uh, on the conference call. Uh, tomorrow night, and you that uh, may need that number, let me say it to you. Maybe I haven't been uh, 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 announcing it enough, but the phone number is 701-802-5074. Let me say it again, 701-802-5074. And then the code is 304-9371-POUND. 304-9371-POUND. Join us tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Everybody, male, female, young people, come on at 6 o'clock and join us. Oh, you have, you have fun. They be laughing and having fun. I've been wondering if they really doing Sunday school in here. They be laughing and having fun in here. But that I believe that is the best way uh, to learn the word of the Lord is to be able to enjoy yourself while you learn it. May the blessing of the Lord be with you. I love you in Jesus Christ. Peace.